Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and HockeyShot.com. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of proper stick handling and deking. Now, there are two components that go into a good deke. There's the physical component, you know, being able to actually perform the move, and then there's the timing element of it. Now, the timing element is a little bit more tricky. That's where, you know, you got to make the move at the right time. So you catch the defenseman leaning one way, then you pull it the other way, or, you know, get him looking down, then put it through his feet, or whatever, you know, whatever it is you're looking to do. So there's the physical and then the timing. In this video, we're going to focus a little bit more on the physical element of it um, just to show you some drills and some things you can practice at home to get better at your stick handling and deking. There are three key points you need to address in order to stick handle properly. First and foremost is how far apart your hands are on the stick. Sometimes you see kids that are too far apart and it makes for a real choppy stick handling motion. Um, if your hands are too close together, then you're not going to have, you'll, you'll have more reach, but you're not going to have the wrist strength that you need to be able, able to control the puck effectively. Now, um, what I usually recommend, especially for youngsters, is go about, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but go about an elbow length or a forearm length apart. So put your elbow on top of your top hand, hold your stick up in the air just like this, and that's about the distance that you're going to want to be in order to have, you know, an effect. That's kind of the sweet spot where you've still got enough power on your hand to make an effective uh, stick handling motion. But at the same time, you're not going to be, you know, um, too choppy and you're not going to have, um, you know, your hands too close together where you don't have the strength that you need. Now, as you get older, as you get more advanced, more experienced, you'll notice the top players, they, they usually go a little bit closer on their hands. And uh, closer on their hands, if you're strong enough to do it, works better because you've got a bigger range of motion. You've got more reach and uh, it tends to make a little bit more finesse as well with the stick handling. So start with that, about an elbow's length apart. And then as you get older, as you get stronger, as you get more advanced, then um, you, know, you can shift it up just a little bit. Second thing you gotta focus on is which hand controls the stick handle. A lot of players have the misconception that it's their bottom hand controlling the stick handle. And again, if bottom hand is the one controlling it, that by nature means the bottom hand has to be you know, kind of tight on the stick. And again, by nature, that's gonna make for a choppy stick handling motion. So the um, reality is top hand controls the stick handle. That's where your, you know, your, your soft hands come from. So your top hand is the one controlling it. Um, you, know, you can even do, if you're, if you're strong enough, you can even kind of stick handle with one hand and control it. That's where you get the soft hands from. Bottom hand is actually a stabilizing hand. So it doesn't really grip the stick, it just more stabilizes. As you can see, the stick's kind of rolling back and forth in my hand. Now, there are um, different tools that you can use. For example, we've talked about the dangle glove before. Um, the dangle glove is a really cool invention that's got, basically it's got a piece of plastic in the middle of the glove and it Velcros in. And what this does is it allows you to force yourself to use your top hand as the main hand controlling the stick handling. So the dangle glove doesn't allow me to really grip the stick very well. So it's, it, again, it does exactly what I'm describing. It makes it so the bottom hand has to be a stabilizing hand, but it doesn't let the bottom hand control, control the stick handling. Okay, so um, you can use, pick up a dangle glove or you can use a piece of PVC pipe or a toilet paper tube, um, you know, different stuff like that, but you can be creative with that. The point is, is top hand controls a stick handle. Last but definitely not least is you need to have a slight weight transfer as your stick handling. So if I'm just standing still, weight transfer looks kind of like this. If I'm in stride, then you know you want to uh, basically be doing one stick handle per stride optimally. Now you want to get yourself to the point where your hands and your feet can act independently of each other, where you can be skating, doing crossovers, doing whatever you need to do, and your hands are doing one thing while your feet are doing the other thing. That's a more advanced technique, but that's what you're building towards. So um, again, last step or last key point is make sure you've got a weight transfer as you're doing your stick handling. So now that we've kind of laid the groundwork for what's expected for proper stick handling technique, now we can move forward into some drills. Now, um, this is a drill that I like to do um, just at the very beginning of a, of a hockey camp, for example, um, or a team that I'm working with, just to lay the foundation, lay the groundwork for everything that we're going to be doing. It's a basic stick handling drill, and um, if you've got a partner, you can have your partner um, stand facing you, point to one side or the other, and that's where you're going to be stick handling. So if the partner's pointing straight at you, you're going to be stick handling, you know, head up, looking at your partner, stick handling the ball or puck in front of you. Right now, um, I'm just going to pull this back. I'm using a smart ball, okay? So, uh, you know, you can do this. You can do this really cheap. You know, get your setup, um, pick up a smart ball, and then go from there. So stick handle in front of you. If the partner points to the side, you're going to pull off to the side. 
whichever side of your body the partner pointed to. Okay, and then go back to the front, then pull off to the other side. Okay, now you can speed this up or slow it down, but that's the first step. Okay, so that's the basic beginning phase of this. Now, you can get a lot more advanced with this. Um, once the players have gone through that for a little bit, then what I like to do is what I call the one, two, three, then pull it out to the side. So we'll go like this, we'll go one, two, three, and then pull it and extend out to the side. This obviously mimics a deke a lot more similar than what we were doing just before. So let me see if I can get this all in the camera shot here. So we go one, two, three, then pull out to the side. Now you'll notice a couple key points. When I pull out to the side, my hands, get a lot more close together, okay? So I'm pulling out, reaching. I bend that strong side leg, okay? Bend the strong side leg and extend out to the side. The key to successful deking in terms of technique is gonna be to get comfortable handling the ball or the puck far away from your body and being comfortable with that and being able to utilize that and pull it out quickly, okay? So you wanna be able to pull out and pull back. Okay, so we do the one, two, three off to the forehand side, and then we can go one, two, three, and off to the backhand side. So it's the same concept. We go one, two, three, and then extend out to the backhand side. Now you'll notice technique on the backhand side is the same. I still reach. I still put all the weight on my, on my strong side leg there, uh, leg bent, but now the difference is I'm extending out to one hand. Okay, so backhand side, you can get a lot further extension if you go out to one hand. Okay, so again, getting comfortable handling the ball or the puck outside that regular range of motion for yourself. Now, as you progress through that, then you can bring yourself into toe drags. Um, there's a lot of different equipment that you can use to work on that. And then eventually you get to the point where you're gonna work on your timing aspect of it. To fully work on timing, you obviously need a player, you need a one-on-one -on -one situation. But if you get a, a little tool like the attack triangle here, Let's see if we can get this into the shot. Might turn it this way. Okay, you get a little tool like the attack triangle in here. Now you can still work on some of the motion, some of the, some of the physical movements of the deke. You know, for example, putting it through the stick and the skates, right, that little triangle. Working on feathering technique, where as you're pulling through, instead of going up and over, you're pulling back and around, right? Again, with that loose hand on the bottom hand, so you pull in, feather around, and go through. Or you can work on you know, popping it through the stick, the skates, and pick it up on the other side. So these are all the motions that you can get to. You know, if you want to get even more creative, you can pull up, up and over, catch it on the other side, start working on those types of plays. But creativity, you know, cre there's no limit to creativity. You can work on you know, any types of moves you want. And then after you've mastered the basic uh, the basic physical movements of all these moves, then you can start applying them on the ice. So take whatever you're working on off the ice, apply it in your one-on-one -on -one drills, in practice, in games, and uh, different stuff like that. So hopefully that little stick handling progression makes some sense for you. Remember, all of the technique and all the stuff we worked on, the three key points and everything, um, that applies whether you're standing still, working on it in a stationary uh, environment, or if your feet are moving on the ice full speed in practice, the same key concepts still apply. Um, how far apart your hands are spread on the stick, uh, top hands controlling the stick handle, and you always want that little bit of a weight transfer, and that will help you as you, you know, want to get more shifty when you're going side to side, putting a move on a defenseman or whatever. So take these skills, work on them at home, apply them in your practices, and uh, before long you'll be able to do them very comfortably in the game situations. Remember, you can pick up all this stuff at HockeyShot.com, and make sure you visit us at WeissTechHockey.com for more drills, skills, and other important videos that you can use to help improve your game.